It was a topic so important to Ron Reagan that even as he was mourning his father's death, he wanted to speak out. Now he's set to give a major speech Tuesday night at the Democratic Convention, pushing for an increase in federal funding for stem cell research. It's a relatively new field of science that's steeped in controversy. Some critics say it destroys human life, but proponents say it could offer millions of sick or injured people a new life. Here's Josh Mankiewicz. Jesse Billauer was in love with the Pacific. I grew up by the beach, so all my friends were really into the water, and luckily one of my friends' dad took us out surfing one time, and then it was just love at first try, and never wanted to get out of the water. By age nine, he was already hopelessly addicted. His family shot this home video of Jesse doing what he loves most. Soon he was a champion surfer, a true prince of tides. He became a state lifeguard. But one day, Jesse was chasing a perfect wave when something went wrong. The wave hit me in my back and went head first into a sandbar. And my whole body went numb and tingly. I, I knew at that moment that something was really wrong. I knew I was paralyzed because I never had a sensation in my life. That was eight years ago. Is there any hope that you'll be able to walk again? There's lots of hope. Lots of hope. It's going to happen. And you say that because I'm you, young. Have, you have this great attitude? I just say that because I'm 25 years old. There's a lot of research going on. A lot of doctors working on different areas to make sure that one day people in my situation will be able to walk again. Why are we prolonging this stem cell debate? It's a hope he shares with actor Christopher Reeve, paralyzed when he was thrown from a horse, with actor Michael J. Fox, who's fighting Parkinson's disease, and with Ron Reagan, who watched his father slip away, stricken with Alzheimer's. I think that the government should launch an Apollo-style program to investigate embryonic stem cell research. Want to play a little electoral man? Ron Reagan is an MSNBC contributor and a member of the hardball election team. But Tuesday night, he'll make the case for federal funding of embryonic stem cell research on national television at the Democratic Convention. This is like magic, and this could revolutionize uh, medicine. Stem cells are the foundation cells for every part of the human body. Because they're blank or so-called undifferentiated cells, they're a kind of clean slate that can be programmed in different ways. The idea is that stem cells could be programmed to regenerate tissue, meaning that instead of transplanting organs, doctors might be able to simply implant stem cells which would join a spinal cord back together, or heal burns, arthritis, blindness, or a malfunctioning heart. The hope and promise and the fierce debate generated by stem cells grew from advances in in vitro fertilization, in which many more embryos are created than usually needed by a couple seeking to have a baby. The unused embryos, scientists hoped, could be harvested for their stem cells. But opponents led by the Catholic Church have fought against that. President Bush, who opposes abortion, also opposes the use of human embryos to obtain stem cells because the embryos are destroyed in the process. Even the most noble ends do not justify any means. His administration reversed a Clinton-era policy of providing federal funding for embryonic stem cell research. Mr. Bush's policy allows government money to be spent only on existing stem cell lines, that is, stem cells that were created before the policy changed. Can you blame conservatives? Can you blame evangelicals for not wanting to have the federal government subsidize something that they don't believe in? Destroys human life. That's how you might put it and they might put it. They would save the child. They would see that there is a distinction between a living, breathing child with a mind, with memories, with hopes, with a family and friends, and this bundle of cells that has no mind, no consciousness, feels no pain, is not a human being. I could get on the phone right now and within five minutes find someone who would say in response to that argument, 
you can't destroy life in order to save it or to help it. We do it all the time. We do it all the time. We're fighting a war right now to save lives, aren't we? We're in Iraq bombing the bejesus out of people to save American lives in, in the long run. So the idea that we don't sacrifice lives to save lives is on the face of it a specious argument. Many Americans believe that the destruction of human embryos is morally wrong. Dr. Leon Cass is chairman of the President's Council on Bioethics and a Hertog Fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, a conservative Washington think tank. This policy has found a reasonable way to allow the research to proceed without violating uh, the, um, uh, what we owe to nascent human life. It's simply wrong to say that we have placed a break on stem cell research in this country. The Bush policy has opened the door for the very first time. There are very few experiments that anybody would like to do in this country that cannot be done with the existing stem cell lines. Many researchers disagree with that and say the administration's policy is holding back medical advancement, claiming that existing stem cell lines don't provide enough material. Although the White House recommended we speak with him, Dr. Cass says he's speaking for himself. He also says that stem cells may never deliver on their promise. One of the terrible things that's going on amidst all of this hype and politics is that people are cruelly exploiting the hopes of patients and their families, promising them cures just around the corner. It is possible that as research goes forward, we will find out that for whatever reason, this won't work. But we won't know until we try, of course. And how do you say to people who suffer from Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis and diabetes and all these other diseases, yeah, it looked promising, but you know, politically it was sort of a tough call, so we decided not to do it at all. I mean, that just seems wrong. You know, it can also be argued that it's cruel to sort of uh, cut the hope of those people by allowing scientific advancement to be hostage to the right to life movement. That's, that's rather unfair. Um, it is not only the right to life movement that has a concern about how we treat nascent human life. It is also important that we protect the vulnerability of human life at all of its stages, and it is nationally important that we not alienate uh, large portions of the, our fellow citizens, some of whom think that this is the equivalent to taking a life, others who are just worried that when we start to treat nascent human life as a natural resource for our own uses, we are on a slippery slope. Dr. Cass points out that the president's position is a compromise that allows federally funded research to continue and doesn't restrict private funding or research at all. It is amid that back and forth debate that Ron Reagan decided to stop commenting on the news and start making it. Tuesday night, he'll trade on his family name to get the push for stem cell dollars in the headlines. Thank you. Isn't it possible, maybe even likely, that your father would have opposed this kind of research? Anything is possible, and I don't speak for my father. My father has passed away, and I cannot speak for him. My mother knows him better than anybody else, and better than anybody ever did. And she seems to think that he would have supported this. He freely admits that of all the diseases that might one day benefit from stem cell therapy, Alzheimer's, which struck down President Reagan, is nowhere near the top of the list. Ron says he and his mother are prepared to lobby together for funding, no matter who wins the election. Maybe the Democrats are using me. Wouldn't that be shocking? But you know what? I'm using them. You know, and all these people that have been taking shots at me lately for doing this thing, as long as they spell embryonic stem cell correctly, I don't care. It's fine. It puts the issue in the public eye, and that's the only reason I'm doing this. You know, you've been around politics long enough to know that speaking at a convention, even if you don't say, I want you to elect John Kerry, mm -hmm. but speaking at their convention, that is an endorsement. Um, I'm not sure. I want this speech to be as apolitical as I can possibly make it while admitting that what everybody knows, that, that the Democratic platform has a plank in there about embryonic stem cell research, supporting embryonic stem cell research, and the Republicans don't. Uh, uh, Jesse Billauer is one of those people caught in that intersection between science, politics, and religion. But he probably won't be watching that debate unfold. He'll be surfing. Okay, the water. He's not yet back on his feet, but he's doing his best to get back in the water. Like I said, we don't know when that cure is going to be here. So, we all need to get together 
and raise much awareness and funds at the same time enjoy life.